Hey everyone, welcome back and thank you so much for all your support to the channel so far. Today we start a brand new series about Unreal Engine. And I know there's been a lot of videos recently about Unreal Engine 5 and I am working on one so that will be coming soon. But for today we're going to start from scratch and we're going to start a brand new tutorial about how you can create your own first person shooter game. And just a quick disclaimer, most of the assets that I'm using in this video are either ones that were free that I downloaded by the time of recording this video or some assets that I've paid for. So we may not reach the same level of details that you're currently seeing. However, I will do my best to take you through everything step by step and give you enough knowledge to be able to create something very similar. So if you've never used Unreal Engine before, I will leave a link in the description for where you can download it. And what I would recommend is going for the creator's license to start with, as it is completely free to use and you can always buy the publishing license and pay royalties if you do decide you want to start selling your game. So once the editor has been downloaded, this is what you'll be greeted with. It might look a little bit different on your end, however it should look quite similar. What you'll need to do now is go to the library tab and find out which version you've got installed. Currently I'm running on the 4.25 version so we'll launch that. So once it's all loaded up you'll be greeted with this uh, you can see some of my projects there just going to go down and you've got a selection of things that you can uh, do with the engine of course today we're going to be selecting a video game or a game once you've selected that it will give you a little bit more options normally we would go for a first person shooter template um, however there are some assets that would be missing if we were to go with this uh, template so for today's project we're going to be selecting a third person shooter or third person game once you selected that you can see the project settings and you can pretty much leave everything exactly as it is We're just going to locate where it's going to be saved and name the project. So we'll just name that one as a test project for now. And then once you're all happy with everything, just hit create project. And to keep things as simple as possible for this tutorial, I'm not going to go too much into the UI side of things of the engine. If this is the first time you're using it, then please just follow along and I will explain things as we go through the tutorial. I guess the one thing you'll need to understand is how to navigate through the main viewport which is quite simple it's exactly as you would using a mouse and a keyboard uh, and gaming on a pc so you use your mouse and the a s d w keys on your keyboards to be able to navigate throughout your scene and the good thing about gaming engines in general specifically obviously the unreal engine is that it's very similar to an operating system you don't really need to understand the programmatic side behind it or how it works it's already all there for you ready for you to kind of use and manipulate you just need to understand how to use it which is what i'm about to show you today right so the first thing we're going to do is change the camera from a third person view to a first person view as you can see there when i clicked on the camera this is how the camera sees the actor and so we're going to be changing that inside the character is blueprint so we'll go to the blueprint folder and open up the third person character blueprint and if this is the first time you see blueprints please don't be intimidated uh, it is quite simple actually and i'm going to explain how it works but for now we're not going to worry about that we're going to go to the viewport tab and do some changes there so you can see your character there you can see the camera there and we can click on the camera and position it directly where the character faces However, we need to make some changes before we can do that as as soon as we're going to apply some changes, uh, the camera position will change anyways. So the first thing we'll need to do is make that camera part of the character itself. So we'll go to the third person character properties on the top left and click and drag the follow camera and make it part of the mesh so that the mesh will become the parent of the camera and that way they can move together. So the engine understands now that the camera is part of the body of the character. However, it's not moving in line with the head of the character and that's what we'll need to do next. So we'll need to adjust the camera again to make sure that it moves only with the head of the character and not the whole body. So in the details panel of the follow camera itself on the right hand side, we'll select the follow camera 
scroll down and find the parent socket inside that you'll need to type head and select the head of the character to make sure that the camera understands that this is what it needs to be in line with okay so now that we've got the camera as part of the character and moving in line with the head there are only two settings that we need to apply before we can make the final adjustments to the camera position the first one will be the camera rotation or the controller rotation and that means that when you move the character's head, when you move the mouse to the right and left to make sure that the camera understands to rotate with the head. So basically the first thing we'll do is again in the follow camera uh, properties on the right hand side we'll need to scroll down and find use pawn controller rotation and check that. And then we'll go back and select the character itself rather than the camera. So this time we are looking at the properties of the third person character. Scroll down and find the controller rotation for yaw. And we're going to check that as well. And now we're ready to make the final adjustments to the camera position. So using the keyboard and mouse, as I mentioned earlier, navigate around your character and just make sure to move the camera right above the character's shoulders and uh, kind of like inside the head of the character to make sure that it gives it that first person perspective view. That's pretty much where you need it to be. Um, that looks quite good there. We'll just hit compile and save and go back to our main level, press play and see how it looks. And there you go. So as you can see there, we now have a first person view of first person perspective uh, with a full body character as well, which is normally what is called the true first person perspective, which means that you can see the whole body of the character rather than just the arms, which is the reason why I decided to go for the third person template rather than the first person, because if we were to go with the first person template, all you get is the arms of the character and the head. That way you can get the whole body and you can still see the arms jumping up. And of course it will look much better once we've added on a weapon as well. Okay, so moving on and now we're going to start setting up the health and armor bars for our character uh, which will require some simple coding but it will be done through blueprints so again as I mentioned if this is your first time dealing with it it's not that complicated and you should be able to follow along and understand what's going on. So I've gone back into the third person character blueprint this time I've selected the construction strip tab and what we're going to do now is create some variables. So under variables, click plus, add a variable, and we'll call that one health. And then in the properties, we'll change that into a float. And then we go back and create another variable, call that one armor. And again, uh, should automatically actually be a float. And you'll have to hit compile first before you can give it an actual value so we'll hit compile and save and then we'll give them a value of one each one being 100 percent so the idea here is that those variables will hold some reference to what we need to call on later when we're doing our blueprints and that way we can use those later on to reference to the value that we need for the certain amount that will be taken from the character's health or armor but for us to actually see this inside the game, we'll need to create something called a widget to be able to bring that to the viewport of the game. So this is what we're going to do now. We're going to create a new folder. We'll call that one FPS WID for widgets. And inside the folder, we're going to right click, go to user interface and create a widget blueprint. We're going to call this one HUD or HUD for heads up display. Double click on it to open it. Okay, so that's our heads up display widget. We just need to add a progress bar for now. So this is what's going to act as the health and armor. So just some slight adjustments there and what I've done is I've clicked Control W which duplicated it. So once I'm happy with the size of it, I've duplicated it and then there we go. We've got our health and armor bars ready to be programmed. 
Next, we're just gonna make sure that they are actually working properly. So we'll go to the progress bar and just drag that to the right and make sure that you can see it in the preview there. And we'll do the same thing for the health bar just to make sure that it's also working properly. And then if we scroll down a little bit, you can actually change the colors for the progress bars themselves. So we'll go for the classics, uh, red for health and blue for armor. And if you'd like to be super organized, you can rename the progress bars in there to reference to them later. And the other thing you can do as well is anchor them, which is actually an important step that I forgot to do. But you can adjust that to anchor them to the corner they're set in, in this tab here. So now that we've got the visual side of it all done and working properly, we will need to set up the functionality of it. So what we're going to do is bind the progress or percentage of the bar to a certain functionality. So under progress and percentage, if you press where it says bind, and that will take us to the blueprint here so we can be able to program what those bars actually will do. And the first thing we're going to do is drag out from where it says get armor percentage and we need to cast that to the third person character. So type in cast the third person character and select that nod there. And then as the third person character, we will need to get the armor variable. So we'll need to call back on that variable that we've created earlier. So type in get armor. And that's the variable that we've created earlier and then from the armor drag it out and return that to the value nod and then the last thing we're going to do is drag out from where it says object and we're going to type in get player character and that again will be the return value connected to the cast to third person character and that is pretty much it that is the actual functionality of the armor bar um, connected to the percentage just very simple steps to follow so we'll just hit compile and save and then what you can do is switch between the graph and the design tabs up there in the top right corner um, and that will allow us to go back and select the health bar um, and do exactly the same thing except of course this time instead of getting the reference to the armor we're gonna say get health so we'll get the health variable that we've created earlier and connect everything together compile and save and that is it you're all good to go you've got the health and armor functionality and visual all set up and ready to go and i'm just going to go back to the design tab actually and i may as well just show you how to anchor those bars so if you press on the bar itself go to the top right press anchor and then you can select the corner that they want them to stay in it's just a really good habit to make sure that things on the widgets um, to make sure that they stay where they are in the game and don't end up moving all around the screen and we're actually going to go and press play and you'll notice that the bars are not actually there uh, so they're not actually showing on the screen which is the last step that we need to do to bring them out for the player to actually see them so that's what we're going to set up next and by the way if you do enjoy this content and you find it useful i would highly appreciate it if you give the video a thumbs up it does help me understand which content that i need to focus on and it also really helps with the youtube algorithm but anyways, going back to the tutorial, what we're going to set up now is something very simple uh, just to bring that widget, the heads up display, out onto the main screen for the player to actually see it. So to do that, we'll need to go back into the blueprint for the third person character. So we'll go back to the folder and open up the third person character blueprint. Select the event graph tab on the top right. right click and type in begin play and we need to select the nod event begin play once you have that let's drag out and type in create widget and then under the class you'll need to select the widget itself in this case it will be the one that we've created so hud or hud 
And finally, we'll drag out from the return value and type in add to viewport and select the nod that will then add this widget to the external viewport for the player to see. Let's compile and save. Go back and hit play and there you go. This is the player's health and armor showing on the screen correctly. I feel like they're slightly off though, so I'm just going to go back and make some small adjustments to make sure that they are 100% inside the border of the screen. And the other thing we're going to do as well, just to make sure that they are working correctly, is if we go back into the third person character blueprint and the two variables that we've created for the health and armor, and let's give it a value of less than one, so we'll do 0 0.5 and 0 0.7 just so that we can um, we can see that the bars are actually filling up and down then you can see that the values are correctly working you can see that the health and armor are not at a full value which means that the variables are working correctly but that brings us to the end of this tutorial or this part of the tutorial next we're going to be looking at things like in-game menu and how to pause the game and then we'll go a little bit more into pain volumes and triggers. We'll then add our character and the weapon. And then finally, we'll look into the level details and the visuals. The last thing you want to do when you're creating a video game is your level environment. Because that then creates a lot of pressure on your GPU and CPU. So you always want to start by getting all the coding for the game mechanics and logic. And all the small visuals and details. And then the last thing you work on is your level design or level environment. But anyways, we'll pick that up in part two and onwards. For now, as always, thank you very much for watching. Until next time.